Now, Cap Caveview Local News at 11. Good evening and thanks for joining us on Cap Caveview Local News at 11. I'm Alyssa Warner. And I'm Stacy Lee. Thanks for joining us tonight. Yeah, we are here late for you. We're going to join friends a little later tonight, but we want you to have the very latest on the massive wildfires we've been reporting on all evening near Benton City and the city of Kiona. So all the evacuation orders have been lifted for the Yakutat Hansen Road fire. This is what we saw earlier today as we were out. This was along I-82. We're talking the homes that are now have had the evacuation order lifted are along Weber Canyon, County Well, McBee Road and McBee Grade between Gibbon and I-82. Fire officials said the wildfire had burned more than 7,000 acres in this region. We saw the flames getting really close to some of the houses earlier today, but I did talk to the public information officer with Bennett County Fire District 1. She told me they didn't lose any houses in this fire. We saw the blaze moving quickly. Many areas in and around Kiona were evacuated because of the threat and just how close those flames were getting to the houses. And Stacy, this is something we were talking about earlier that the wind and the low humidity were really driving this fire. Well, that is what a red flag warning is. It's it's usually issued 24 hours in advance of possible fire danger like we had today. And it was uh, properly issued because we had exactly that. The low humidity, the high temperatures and those strong gusty winds all put together just for the perfect storm, so to speak. It was, and we saw that with the dry conditions near the highway, investigators haven't determined yet how any of the fires that we saw across the region today started. So they'll still be working on that. This one, they're still working to get under control. I was just driving back from this area, saw still flames kind of licking along the tops of the hills. So this is an ongoing fight tonight. But we saw that they are getting state support coming in possibly overnight. Now, the bad news is for the wind warnings. These uh, warnings are expiring uh, later tonight. However, uh, we could still see some more gusty winds through tomorrow afternoon. And that means that the state enforcements that are coming in are going to be extremely useful. Something that I heard from fire officials earlier tonight. Because of all the wind, the red flag warning, all the fires that are starting, we're, we've pretty much exhausted our resources and our guys and gals out on the front lines are really getting worn out. So the state did approve mobilization. There are reinforcements on the way. Uh, they might not be able to take over command until sometime in the morning. Now, one thing fire officials did tell me, Stacey, was that they're seeing too many people calling 911 to ask for information, and that's really slowing them down on this fire response because, you know, things were changing really quickly this afternoon. They had a lot of new fires starting up, people calling in to say, hey, this is on fire, that's on fire. But if the 911 dispatchers are tied up trying to answer someone's questions and telling them, no, just I can't answer that, Go to social media. That's where the answers are. There you go. So they're asking, please don't call 911 when we have an emergency situation. If you have questions, if you have questions, go to social media. Come to us here on Cap View because the 911 dispatchers are trying to get ahead of the flames in these situations. And I'm not going to doubt that this will be the first of many red uh, red flag warnings we'll see this summer. So uh, always take them seriously and be prepared. Have stuff packed up and ready to go, especially if you live in areas that tend to burn. Yep. And again, the evacuations for the Yakutat fire have been lifted so far tonight, but we are told you don't have to go home if you don't want to. If you're still nervous about the fire kind of encroaching in that region, like I said, it's still burning. So if you're concerned about that, you do not have to go home. You can definitely make other uh, accommodations. The Red Cross does have their resource center set up at Kybe for people who may need a place to stay That's overnight. Good, good advice there. <laughs> <laughs> now, while still battling the Yakutat fire, fire crews actually had to stretch themselves further because of a blaze on Rupert Road. So we were out there one fire was burning south of I-82. This fire was then burning north of I-82. At least two buildings we know burned in this area after reports of fire came out just after 7 o'clock this evening. Crews battled the blaze there. We didn't see any more evacuations at the time, but I did hear that multiple homes were in serious danger and around 200 homes were at risk while firefighters were out there. 
At this time, it looks like this fire is contained, but again, this is a changing situation. We could still see hot spots overnight, so please be very cautious and pay attention to emergency warnings and, overnight. And I would have to add that I think after that wet spring we had, that cooler spring, uh, we have a lot of greenery. There's a lot of fuel to burn, and now that things have dried out, that increases the danger even more so. Right, and even in the areas that don't have a lot of people, we saw another fire down in uh, Oregon in Umatilla County that did have some evacuations earlier today. They're calling this one the Hat Rock Wildfire. It burned more than 10,000 acres within just a matter of hours. And you can see there's lots of vegetation. Stacey, as you mentioned, that's all dried out since this spring. Now, while people are being allowed to go back to their homes tonight, fire crews are still monitoring this. We saw state and federal resources called out to fight this fire. It started just before 11 o'clock this morning. The high winds and the dry vegetation spread that fire really fast, and they did have to close Highway 730 from Wallula Junction to almost all the way to Umatilla. That is still closed tonight, so definitely check ODOT before you head out in the morning because that's been closed for a long time this evening. Right. And that's a very well-traveled road, especially by trucks uh, traveling right. through with deliveries and whatnot. So again, be fire wise. We're going to have to think about this all summer long. It's now part of the weather forecasting <laughs> tools that we have to think about. So again, uh, be smart about that. If you live in areas like that, you want to clear vegetation from around your home, create a barrier so that your house is protected in times like this. And we did hear with that fire in Oregon that the winds actually got so bad, the, the aircraft couldn't take off anymore. They had to actually ground them right. because of the wind in that those area. Those winds coming through the Columbia River Gorge and mm -hmm. any of those mountain gaps and passes are even more intense than what we see in the lower elevations. So we're still going to be dealing with more wind, Alyssa, unfortunately. But we'll be tracking that for you. And then there was one more fire we need to tell you about. It broke out near the city of Finley this afternoon. This is the second one they've seen in two days. Fire officials actually took our photographer Chris out to the fire line on this one. And you can see what firefighters were facing. This fire broke out just before 3.30 in the afternoon uh, near, tell me on this one, Stacey. Hover Park. Hover Park. Yes. And Hanson Road. And this one burned more than 1,000 acres, which considering that you had a 10,000 acre fire burning just on the other side of Willula Lake, it might not seem so big, but this is still a, a large response for firefighters to deal with, especially as they're stretched so thin across the entire region today. Uh, we're told that one was being fueled by grass, the brush, the dry timber that we were talking about before. And again, this one, as with the others, the cause still under investigation tonight. It's probably going to be a couple of days, I would imagine, before we get answers about how these fires started. But we can talk about the weather is calming down tonight. It is starting to calm down slightly, but we're still seeing some gusty winds in some areas, and we're going to be dealing with those breezy to gusty winds, not at a wind advisory level tomorrow. However, it's still going to make firefighting uh, difficult. As you can see, these are current wind speeds around the area right now. Tri-Cities at 21 miles an hour. That's sustained winds. That's not counting the 25 and 30 and 40 mile an hour gusts. We've been seeing strong gusty winds in the Ellensburg area as well. That continues to be a hot spot, uh, but but the fires again burning here. This will be some trouble for our fighter firefighters overnight. Let's take a look at those future cast winds. And again, uh, we see things calming down a little bit this evening. But as we pop into tomorrow morning, eight o'clock, look at Hanford, 22 mile an hour gusts. We've got 20 mile an hour gusts in Tri Cities and then Yakmot 15. So yes, we're going to continue to see those strong gusty winds through tomorrow evening, and then things should start to calm down as we move into the next couple of days. The other concern is air quality. And again, we were looking green earlier just a few hours ago and then this really started to change as those fires develop. So orange is getting into the unhealthy zone. This is moderate and again we'll keep an eye on air quality for you for the next couple of days. Here's our future smoke cast map again. You can see the fires here burning and you see the wave of smoke again blowing to the east because uh, our system is moving in from the west bringing that cooler air. Now the good news is we'll see those uh, those moisture levels, the humidity levels start to rise so that will decrease our chances for fire.
Here's our temperatures overnight tonight again, or excuse me, right now, sorry, 68 Tri-City, 63 Yakima, 63 in Walla Walla. Here's what it looks like on our future cast. Again, we have clear weather coming. Most of that uh, wind and system has moved through, so we'll start to see things calm down. But there is another system out on the coast there, and that could bring some more gusty winds later in the week and some potential uh, light showers on the west side of the state. Temperatures overnight tonight, we're going to see 40s and 50s, so much cooler. Thank goodness. I'm happy to see those cooler temperatures tonight. And then those daytime highs tomorrow, again, reducing. That should help with our uh, with our fire dangers for the next couple of days. Let's take a look at that seven day planner. Again, uh, very mild weather coming our way for a couple of days. Could see some clouds moving in. And again, we could see some potential breezy winds later on. Father's Day, though, looking pretty nice out there for all the dads. Here's Yakima. Again, much cooler tomorrow. Pretty calm weather moving into the weekend and a little bit cool on Father's Day in Yakima. Alyssa. Thanks, Stacy. We're going to turn it over to friends now for tonight, but you can wake up with Good Morning Northwest tomorrow morning starting at 5. We'll continue tracking the very latest for you. And of course, we'll have updates overnight on yaktrynews.com. Thanks so much for joining us.